Hello, and welcome back to our continuing settlement survival new content series, Building a Trade Empire. I'm Larry, it's episode 17, and I'm so excited to make this video. Oh, I should have made this video like the second or third one, but I didn't. Oh, this is going to be so cool. And you are going to make so much money off this and you are going to get so much faction that it's, oh yeah. Okay. So when you first start out the game, you definitely want to get our little trading post right there. Small trading post, get that puppy built. Don't worry about doing anything yet. It just get it built. So then you can turn around and see the factions and you can check out the pricing. You know, that's just that's just stuff that we want. We we want to check it out. And it's so nice that we can finally, you know, have these things side by side. So, okay, we get that. Got it? Everyone, everybody up to speed there? This is a building we want to get pretty, pretty quick. After you get your first buildings, you know, you want to you want to make sure you get that. Then, uh, make sure you get, before you build the ferry, okay, spend a point in the police. Because just to be on the safe side, if so, when the merchant ship shows up and a plague breaks out, always watch this sidebar. And if somebody gets sick, banish them. Unless you have the technology to deal with the sickness. Now, here we have our clinic. We can do cholera and we can do measles. So, you know. Make sure you have the ability to treat these, but on also make sure you have several clinics down, you know, two or three, because your first doctor will easily get overwhelmed if uh, a plague breaks out. And if it gets out of control, you could lose your colony. So it's up to you. I like the banish technique because I look at it this way. At the very beginning, I don't have the cholera treatment. I don't have the measles treatment. So when somebody's sick, they go into the clinic and usually I lose the doctor and the immigrant or the sick person and the doctor. So I learned right straight away. Get the police so you can banish that person because it's better to lose one person than to lose two people. So, food for thought, it's up to you. So, we have our ferry now. And since they updated uh, the patch today, we can now do the barter system. So, these are all the stuff that we can buy. Now, a lot of this stuff I don't need or I don't want right now. But that's for me. I don't want any of this. But just look at a, a few of the items and see like, okay, is any of this stuff worth trading? Now, right here, we have backpacks. Costs us 15. Hmm. I have, I only have 351 silver. Now, you have to remember, you do not want to use your silver coins on this. All you want to do is use your, your trade items. So, I have, what, 4,212 that I could spend. So, right here, I could turn around and buy what? Can I buy a 1,000 of them? Or that's going to be, what, 15,000, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so we could only buy uh, 200. That's 3,000. So what, 250? I don't feel like doing math right now. So 300? Oh, it's going to be just shy of 300. It's going to be like 395. Or 295. Right? Okay, so well, we would do like 290. See? 
So, oh crap, not even that. 280, I'll just do 280. Okay, we could buy 280, okay? Now, the one thing that's a bummer is I don't, you know, is 280 enough to send off a caravan when I can send off, you know, 1600 you see what I'm saying? Because you you wanna you wanna totally fill up a merchant. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna kind of waste this trade, and we're going to trade this off. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to buy this. Okay. All it did was cost me my silver. That is it. Nothing else. Okay. So, <laughs> and I just overpaid because I did not correct the price on my silver. Don't make that mistake, okay? Don't. So, we have our backpacks. So now, let's cruise over to our trading post. And let's go ahead and pull up the factions. Move that over. And we're going to pull up our pricing. And we're going to move that over. Now, I like Lorenzo because I want to trade with Lorenzo. Okay? Because I want, I wanted the quick hunting. Okay? So that's what I'm going for right now is the quick hunting. That's what I'm concentrating on. Other people, you could choose whoever you want to trade with. But I want to get to level two with him. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to remove the faction I'm going to form a caravan now we have backpacks so we're going to go over here and we're going to go over to clothing we're going to go over to backpack and Lorenzo right here see we're going to lose money here for how much it cost us so we are going to turn around and we are going to go here and we're going to go to backpack and oh, I forgot how many we have. So we have didn't I buy more than 65 backpack? Oh no, they're using them. Uh-oh. Yeah. Watch out for that. Go to your stock management. Oh, this is going to so mess me up. Oh, what a bummer. Hopefully we can stop them from taking more of the backpacks. Okay, remember to... uh <laughs> if you're going to do this, ban the item. <laughs> so I kind of blew that. So that's going to make the trade kind of sucky here. So, hey, live and learn. Live and learn. So now you won't make that mistake and it'll make your life easier. So we now have to come up with basically 1600 So I have to find something that, oh, I gotta get this thing paused. There we go. So we have that. Now let's find another item that we have plenty of that we can make money off of. And even if it's not very much, it is what it is. Like right now, I'm swimming in water. So just for grins, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna sell this item. And then we're going to come over here and go over to beverages so I can trade what? Uh, 1541, correct? 1541. Oh no, look at how much water weighs. No, so 750? We can go a little bit higher. So let's try 760. I can go a little bit higher. We'll go 770. And a little 
bit higher. I'm going to try 800. Okay, so 7... 799 or 798 okay just a little bit so 795 okay close enough so we're gonna sell that awesome sauce life is good now what can we buy from him so we basically have 1,408 that we can buy from them. You know, this is, like I said, this is kind of a sucky trade here. But what do I need? And remember how I've been running short of, of fat? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to raw materials. I'm going to go to food. And I'm going to buy fat. So... I can turn around and buy what? 750 fat? Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to max it out because I want as much fat as possible. So I'm going to lose money on this deal. But I don't care because I need the fat. So that should be... Yeah, that's fine. 1600 So I'm going to purchase that. Come on. Allow me. Okay. We have it there. So, even though I'm going to lose money on this, I don't care because we have some silver. But what we want to do, if my backpacks weren't taken from uh, the my people, what I want to do is buy enough stuff and just have an even trade or I should come out on top. This one's costing me money. I don't care. I really don't. Now, 1.46, okay, that's okay. But at 2%, it's only going to cost me 351 days. And it's only going to be six people. So I'm going to go ahead and form this caravan and send it off. Now, we're going to let them percolate and do their thing. And the caravan's going to go off. But the cool thing is, the more we do this, the it, it's going to be awesome. So, it's not costing us anything, is what, what I'm trying to say. Now, you can do this with any item. It doesn't have to be silver. Just take an item you have a ton of stuff of. You just want it to be worth more than one credit here at the dock because you want you want to be able to buy as many of the higher end items and a lot of it. So the reason why I got such a low price for that silver is if you really look at it in trading, I don't have any points in it. So it used to be we, uh, we could control our reputation and get more money out of it. So, we have to turn around and do what we can to get money. And it's this one right here that is going to improve our pricing the most. So, this is probably going to be... You know, after you get these basic ones up here, definitely go for this reputation one. Because, of course, with uh, your faction increase and all that, you're going to get you're going to get better pricing. So that's something you want to uh, deal with pretty quickly. So uh, another thing you want to look out for is any of the administrators that increases trade efficiency get that one because that's going to put more bonus into the trade see like right now i have one star in it and i have you know it's reduced my trade time and it's increased my carrying weight so you want to get this up to three stars as quickly as you can that's one of the reasons why we now have this advanced research 
which I should have maybe gone through this line through at the very beginning. You know, it's here or there. But this increases the proficiency rate at a 25% increase. So, and it has nothing to do with your research points. This has only thing to do with your proficiency percentage. It allows this percentage to go up quicker. And of course, the more skills that you have in that tab, it's going to go up faster. Because like right now, I only have what just these three. And we only have a proficiency of 1%. Because if I recall, one of the administrators that I got was um, to trade. So, yeah. If you do this, you take a free item that you've made, which with me, silver, it... <laughs> is just a raw material that's being shot over here. And for raw materials, it's my best price. There's nothing else I have to do. I don't have to have a whole big production chain on silver. So I'm getting 12. Now, if you really think about it, look at, uh, matter of fact, let's do it this way. Look at uh, right here, and we go into pricing. I would never send raw silver to these people. And the reason being is it weighs so much money. I mean, so much weight. So if I can only send like, what, 300? That's, that's, that's no big deal. Where... I can trade 5,000 at the dock and buy other materials. So you sit here and you go through and find out something that they want that's worth money and you buy that off the merchant and then send it to them, you know, whoever you want to trade with and then get stuff back. It's just, it's a glorious way of doing things. Now, you know, it's, to me, it's the perfect strategy. Doesn't cost you anything. You buy from here, resell the items, and you'll, you'll resell it technically at a loss to your trade, to your traders. But who cares? It's not costing you anything. So it's just one way to where at the very beginning of the game, where you don't, where you're, you're struggling to build up your settlement and all that, you just take one item, just one item, and sell it in bulk over here. Get as many items as you can, then turn around, pick your favorite faction of who you want to grow with, and sell to them. That will get you your faction perks. That could get you some silver. Uh, it could get you some items that you really want, that you need. So just like I did take a loss on the fat. Well, I could have, since I had silver, it was no big deal. I could have just traded straight across for fat, for the items that I sent them. Sure, it wouldn't have filled up the caravan, and I could have used probably fewer people. But, and that's the whole thing, is don't wait around to have seven people or six people. If, if all you have is three people, then just trade off what three people can carry and make life easier. So, food for thought. And... I, I think it's going to be an excellent strategy for you to use. And as your production chains grow, you could turn around and either barter with him or you'll stop barter, bartering with him and you will just start sending the stuff directly to the faction that you want to generate points with. So hopefully that helps people. 
uh, and that you'll like it and that it'll work for you. So we have two trading points now. I mean, two uh, points now. And it's just like, where do I want to put these? Where that am I going to get the most bang for my buck? Now, I'm thinking logistics. Yeah, this would be nice. And I should technically do this. But I want the better storage. And so I am going to use these points and I'm going to get down to the mountain storage because I want the mountain storage something fierce. And I don't do covered warehouses because can't reinforce them. And if a tornado hits or sandstorm hits and it hits a warehouse, you lose it all. You don't lose anything on your open air warehouses. So the durable storage, okay, if I get this, then I can increase what storage yards that I have, their holding power. So that's worth it. But as soon as I can get the big warehouses in the mountains, they hold a ton. And I'm going to have probably like 10, 12 of these warehouses around my map. I tried to carve these mountains to where I can get storage right here is what I'm hoping for. I don't think I'll get it on this side, but I might get it on this side. And same thing for over here. I'll adjust this road. But I want to get as much mountain storage on the map as possible. Some storage may not even be used. I may, Nobody might toss anything in there. But you have to remember we're going to use these, the transfer stations, to move stuff all around the map. But we're going to be using the small supply station and the large supply station to bring in and deliver items for our workers. Ooh, we ran out of feathers. Oh, that's such a bad thing. That's really bad. So we have leather. We have some alpaca. So let's go ahead and change that. And I bet you the other one's yelling at me too. Where is it at? Why isn't... Oh, this one is already using leather and alpaca. Ah, okay. So. <laughs> Squirrel moment. I'm sorry. But it's, it's easy. The, oh, God, I totally lost my train of thought of what I was, was talking about. Oh, well, I'll move on. Now, oh, yeah, the supply stations and all that fun stuff. So what's going to happen is even if your items are locked up in the big mountain storage, you know, all over the map, who cares? You're going to have your... Uh, supply stations running and grabbing the stuff and when you get horses and mules uh, they're just going to go grab the stuff faster and then when you improve your roads you know life is good and I tell you what you know I used to build in a grid pattern to try to make things faster and all that you know what I don't care about that anymore it is once I have horses who cares I'm the way I'm building now, my people don't have to path very far. So I don't want to have a ton of, you know, just a straight up sterile grid pattern. I want it to look pretty. I want I want it to be ergo. I you know, I want to be able to look at this map and play it for a long time and get like warm fuzzies that, oh, this is my town, this is my settlement. Look how purdy it is, but it's super efficient. It'll be purdy, but it'll be efficient. And so, yeah, and it just don't be afraid to destroy anything. Destroying things, it's, it is what it is. So that's, you know, I'll get, I'll get off my high horse, but just wanted everybody to consider that. 
Now, we still have our housing issues, and the cool thing is, is now, if I want to, I can start upgrading. So, if I'm going to start getting into luxury houses and all that other fun stuff, we need to, to get this infrastructure built up. So, that's what I'm going to be doing. Now, another problem we're having is clothing. And that's the one bummer part right now is I don't want a bunch of flax fields. I really don't. And it's just like, I so wish I had my buffalo. So now I'm going to be forced into making flax fields so I can improve our uh, production on our clothes. So I'm kind of bummed out about that. And I just have to find a decent area to do it in because, yeah. And I, I also have to track uh, the merchant ship. I think it goes down this river. If it does, I'm going to fill in this river. To me, it's pointless. It's, it's not doing me any good because guess what they did? <gasps> and we don't really talk about it and everybody forgets about it, but... When we go over to uh, mining, we have the dig river tool. And oh, how glorious is that? We don't have to unlock everything before we get it. So now, yay. Okay. And we have our two points. So we're going to go ahead and pick up this warehouse. And remember, I'm not going to build those. I'm more worried about the durable storage. So we're going to buy the durable storage. And since we just picked up another tech point, look how fast that stuff's going. It is just like vroom, vroom. So we're going to go ahead and pick up the seller. And soon we are going to have another tech point and I'm going to have mountain storage. So that is going to be glorious. It will be absolutely, to me, it's going to be a game changer. Now, the next skills, I should definitely go into baskets and the pocket expansion. Usually I do that really at the early end, at the beginning of the game. Because having this passive bonus does help. So, but I'm also torn. I also want the villa because then since I'm going to start changing the map, being able to build the villa would be like really nice. But the problem is, is I can't do the luxury bedding. So spending a point on the villa right now would be just pointless. There's, there's no reason for it. Same thing with the tea shop. I don't have any, anything to really support the tea shop but it would be worth having the candy shop because with the mill I can turn the oats into sugar and I could start making candy it's a long way around to doing it but we could do it that way and now uh, you know we still still have all these trading things that we have to deal with but I'm also going to need the pottery because I'm going to need the pottery to make cutlery. Because if I recall, don't we need the cutlery for this one? No, we don't. Okay, so that's no big... Oh, we need the cutlery for the villa. So, yeah. But... I know I'm, I'm getting off track here. But I'm trying to reorient and prioritize my skills that I need because I, I totally foobarred these skills and that was my bad. Now, the one thing I could do is I could go into minting, make coins and buy stuff that way. But this, the trading faction, the one of the factors in the, if you want to get skill points fast, uh, you have to send them items. You're not going to make as much, as much faction points if you're just buying stuff from them. You want 
if you're going to use this caravan, you want to send them stuff and you want to buy stuff from them. So if you want to try just going the silver option and buying stuff from them instead of uh, selling stuff to them, that's going to be your option. And I don't really like that option, so I am going to do the whole trading thing. But it's up to you. Oh, we have this built. So, yay. We're going to go ahead and get this one maxed out. And we're going to get that one finally turned off so we get people back. Okie dokie. I've been talking a lot. It's just like my mouth is like totally dry. No break whatsoever. <laughs> so, another 12 by 12. And that's where we're at. So, I think for me, this has been a productive episode. Hopefully, uh, you really like what I talked about. So, I'm going to be ending it here. And I hope you're having a great day uh, or morning or evening. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, come back and talk to me, you know, comments, please. I haven't gotten a comment for a whole day and it's like, um, please somebody comment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Even if I'm totally screwing things up, please at least write a comment of Larry, pull your head out. You know, you're being a slacker, start doing it right. So. I will talk to you in the, the next episode and bye. <laughs>